Hey there, uh, I'm going to uh, demo the uh, new version of the uh, sequencer that I built, the analog style sequencer. So this is the uh, the whole rack of uh, home built and synthesizer.com uh, modular synthesizer. So this thing uh, is what we're going to talk about today. It is, let me just place the camera. Um, so previously I built this one, which is uh, demoed in some uh, videos as well. And now I have built basically a second version of this for sequencer 2. Uh, I've also built a couple of uh, digital style sequences that you see these, this row of four. So uh, for now I have laid out the rack uh, in uh, kind of rows of monosynths here. So you see there's the bottom row has a uh, Analog style sequencer, digital sequencer, and then we have two oscillators. This is an ARP 4072 filter, and the loss an amp. <coughs> and then the second row is oscillator and a Moten 440 filter. And then if we go up here, it's another row. Uh, this one only has a digital sequencer. I haven't built the uh, the remaining uh, analog one. Two oscillators with a dot com transistor ladder, and the last one up there is a state variable filter with a Moten 300 oscillators um, and also a sequencer. Um, so, anyway, we are talking about this guy down here. Um, so, like before, there is uh, you know four rows of, of uh, eight notes. Uh, I'm not going to talk about how they work, but <clears throat> the additions to this um, sequencer that I didn't have implemented before is uh, we have more switches on this side here so for every row we now have skip reset and if I flip this all the way up then this one decides and it has ratchet stop and repeat so these are functions that I can now uh, without going into the uh, configuration like I had to that I can just set it to ratchet um, and I can also say, uh, so this says 2, 3, and 4 here on this uh, little note. Let me go closer. Like so. So, um, function, oh, damn it, uh, function there. Let me point with this. Um, if the note is set flipped down to function, then this will uh, describe what the what the uh, the step will do. So it's skip, reset. Well, it says more. So if you flip that up, ratchet, stop, repeat, and then we have two, three, and four. So this is repeating two, three, or four times. Uh, we have on-off quantizer. We have direction up, down, and if you flip that all the way up, we have random and ping pong one and ping pong two, which is you know inclusive or exclusive of the. Uh, of the edges ping pong. Uh, so that's uh, <coughs> that's a new functionality plus uh, two additional modes of, uh, of uh, uh, running the sequencer as well. Well let's uh, start with uh, just a simple like there. Um, Oh, now it's on random. So let me set it up to up. So we're only listening to the top row here. Um, if I uh, flip down this to function on this note, you saw that it uh, started uh, ratcheting there and it's ratcheting twice, three times. Oh, that one is also ratcheting. And four. Oh, no, wait four times. Easier to hear if we slow it down. And three times. Or twice. So we also have a repeat. Now it stops actually there and plays that note twice. And that one too. Or three times. Or four times. Uh, and um, 
the other new uh, thing, so you can run this, you know, one row at a time, or four, four rows all at once, uh, two, two sequences of 16 steps, or one of 32 steps. But I also have the 2 times 8 G mode here, which is, uh, if I run the normal way here, and I crank up the... So now we hear the, uh, the actual step of the sequencer. Uh, the length of each note is described globally by this. Now if I switch over to this mode, the 2 times 8, so this will run <coughs> uh, 8 notes in a sequence and the next uh, row will describe how long each note is. So here, I'm going to turn off the ratchet thing here. Or repeat. So here you can see if I go all the way zero on all these, almost hear nothing, right? And I can crank this one up. Oh, some other. Which is an interesting uh, thing. And the same with 16. So here we have 16 steps. And now it's going to go down to this row and play. Um, so the next thing I implemented, let's go back to this mode, was um, a full implementation of the reset and shift inputs here. Uh, so to do that I, I need, uh, I'm going to zoom out, so I'm going to actually run uh, this uh, sequencer here, the digital sequencer, <coughs> and drive drive this. Uh, well, actually, before that, I can plug in a MIDI and just show that we still have drum machine synchronization through uh, through MIDI, right? Uh, but I can also uh, synchronize it externally using these analog thingies. So I'm going to connect the gate out from this sequencer into the shift input uh, row 1 and uh, now I have to program this step sequence. I'm just going to program uh, uh, actually let me make sure that I'm having the right row no, CV1, so that's row 1 on this sequencer um, and the uh, clock source should be internal so record and I'm going to do one, oh wait, I have two connect some kind of input source here. So I'm doing uh, one, two, three, three ticks and one pause. Yeah, just like that and then off. So if I play this back, we can see that it actually now steps uh, three down and one pause. And it keeps going like that, right? Um, and of course I can uh, I can do that with another uh, with another row here. Oh, actually, before I do that, I can uh, so now I can also synchronize this guy through MIDI. If I set the clock source to MIDI, like so, and then so now this one is actually synchronized with the drum machine through MIDI, outputting the gate that. Um, manually steps this sequencer. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm going to describe these sequencers uh, in another video. But uh, for now, that's it. That's the sequencer 2. And uh, one day in the future, there will be a sequencer 3. Actually, there will be two sequencer 3 which has uh, individual um, on-off for uh, each row for transpose and actually dual outputs for, uh, for the CV and gate so I don't have to use uh, multiples for everything. Anyway, um, that's how this works for now. Thank you for watching. Bye.